السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to have another session and this is our last session in the retreat. We talked about <coughs> social wilaya yesterday and last night. Uh, and in this session, I'm supposed to talk about how to prepare for the months of Ramadan. But I want to also connect these two because I think it is with this spirit of Velaya that we can be prepared for entering the months of Ramadan. One aspect of social Velaya is that it helps us to uh, get rid of our ego. Because you cannot form and maintain good relations with others unless you get rid of your ego. Because if everyone is attached to their own preferences, to their own comfort, convenience, then they cannot even be comfortable with their siblings and you know children or parents, let alone with people who come from different backgrounds. We should reach the point that when we meet a believer from any part of the world, we should feel we are part of the same family. Among the companions <coughs> of Imam Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif, we will not have only one ethnicity. Yeah, we will not have all of them from one geographical location. <coughs> we will have people from different parts of the world. But the social velaya makes them one united team. Amir al-Mu'mini says that the companions of Imam Mahdi are very determined. This is one of the key things that we need today, determination. Please remember, we all need determination. Nothing great can be achieved without determination. Among all human beings throughout the history, how many prophets we have? 124,000. Among them, how many messengers we have? 313. Among them, how many are at the top? Five. What we call them? Ulul As. Those who had determination. Yeah, this shows the importance of determination. We could call them those who have knowledge, Ulul Ilm. You could call them those who have hikmah. It's all correct, those who have light. But the key is determination. Azm. On the other hand, when Allah refers to Prophet Adam, Allah Nabiya wa Ali wa salam, what does he say? Lam najad lahu azma. We didn't find determination in Adam. So Adam is not one of Ulul Azm. Ibrahim, Nuh, Musa, Isa, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Even Allah says to the Prophet, Fasbir kama sabara ulul azm min al-rusul. Be patient 
like Olul Azm. So, what makes you succeed in dunya and akhirah is Azm, determination. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says, Alimtu anna afzal zadir rahil ilayk Azmu iradatin yakhtaru kabiha Imam Zain al Abdi says I know that the best provision for someone who is traveling towards you for a wayfarer towards you is determination by which they chose you over any other thing. Okay? So, one condition, one requirement, one quality of the companions of Imam Mahdi is determination. How did Imam Ali explain that? He said, Lo aradu o lo hammu izalat al jibal al rawasi if they decide to move mountains, they will do it. They have so much of determination. And again, this is not the current. You know, like, social wilaya is not the current. The current is individualism. Yeah? Now also is the time that people become weaker and weaker more and more dependent, yeah? We are becoming weak and very impatient, unfortunately, unless you really plan for yourself. Therefore, my idea is that, can we, maybe switch up. My idea is that in future, the main battle would not be based on who has more money or resources or weapon or technology. I think all these things can be somehow found. The main battle is battle of determination. Whoever and who, whatever party is more determined, they are going to win. This is the only thing that can really define success. In the past, it was impossible, you know, if, for example, you are poor or you didn't have, you know, I don't know, good weaponry or big army to succeed. But now it's all a matter of determination. If you have determination, you find whatever you need. So, this is one condition. Another condition or quality of the helpers of Imam Mahdi, in addition to determination, is that their hearts are united with love and wishing the best for each other. If you want to, inshallah, be among the helpers of Imam Mahdi as you know there will be 50 women among the top helpers there are many more but among the top helpers there are 50 women inshallah if you want to be one of them or train inshallah some of them one of the things that you have to work on is this their hearts are united with love and wishing the best for each other. To the extent that when you look at them, you think they are brought up by the same father and the same mother. Someone is Khoja, someone is, you know, Pakistani, someone is Indian, someone is, I don't know, uh, Iraqi, someone is Lebanese, 
someone maybe Chinese, someone maybe you know, American, British. But when you look at their akhlaq and how much they love each other and how much they, you know, resemble each other despite differences of color or, you know, language, you feel that they have been always living together in one house. They had the same upbringing, the same tarbiyah. So, this needs lots of work. This needs, first of all, to get rid of ego. Ego is very restrictive, very much limiting us. Uh, few uh, weeks ago, this we had the discussion, you know, in Qom, and. Some people, you know, were asking about difficulties of working for unity, etc. I said, you know, working with community is not easy. And working with community either destroys your ego or your ego destroys the community. <laughs> you cannot keep ego and work for community because you will receive lots of fair or unfair criticism, yeah? And you know, you have to get rid of your preferences just for the sake of keeping community together. And this is great. This is your struggle. This is your way of disciplining yourself. Your riyadha, you know, in Erfan, we talk about the riyadha, how to do a spiritual exercise to discipline yourself. Everyone thinks that the best riyaza is to do more ibadah, to recite more Quran, to do tahajjud. Yes, this, these are very good. But maybe your greater riyaza is to be patient with your husband or with your wife, yeah, or with community members. You, you have to see what is the thing that you don't like, and that can be your struggle. If you like to have private time and you know enjoy ibadah, then this is not going to be your struggle. This can be your reward. Your struggle is where you don't like. Yeah? Uh, Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please exempt me from sajda for Adam, and I will worship you in the way that no one has ever worshipped you. And Allah said, do you want to worship me in the way that you choose? <laughs> this is not worship. So, Allah chooses for us how we should get closer to him. Maybe he has chosen for me that I get closer through illness, or through poverty, or through family problem, yeah? So, working for unity is one of the areas that is very difficult but it takes you very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if you bring two people closer to each other, just two people, what is the reward? Amir al muminin said in his last will, Allah, Allah, fi salah zate baynakum. Remember Allah, remember Allah about reconciliation. I heard from Rasulullah, he said, that reconciliation is better than one year of prayer and fasting. Okay? So if there is a problem between two sisters, you manage to bring them together and solve this problem. This is better than one year of prayer and fasting. Not that you don't pray and fast and reconcile, but you do that and in addition to that. So now imagine if you can bring 40 people together, what happens? If you can bring whole community together, yeah, there is no way to calculate the reward for bringing community together. And on the other hand, if someone divides two people from each other, this is one of the most, you know, 
serious sins, just to break down the relation between a husband and wife, for example, or between two colleagues, two sisters, two neighbors. Quran says that Harut and Marut, there were two angels who were sent as test. They were telling people, Ennama nahnu fitna. We are test. Okay? They were teaching them magic, but it was a test. But unfortunately, some people, what they did, يَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَالزَّوْجِ They were learning magic to separate between husbands and wives. Okay? And Quran says, this is kufr. If you read the context, you see Allah uses kufr for this. This is a kind of disbelief to separate two people from each other. So, if you work for social wilaya, for unity, that is one of the fastest and best and deepest ways for your spirituality, to work for unity. It needs dedication, it needs patience, it needs determination, it needs wisdom, but it's amazing. But in addition to that, there are a few more things that I would like to mention, especially for preparation for months of Ramadan. Last year, I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken, or the year before, but maybe it was last year. Uh, Alhamdulillah, an idea came to my mind that I can, inshallah, share with you. But first, I want to ask you as a question. Uh, you know, we have a concept uh, which is Idraku Laylat Al Qadr. Yeah? <coughs> what is Idraku Laylat Al Qadr? Have you heard? For example, you pray that, inshallah, we can. Do Idraq of Laylatul Qadr. What does it mean? Prepare, yes, but preparation leads to Idraq. If you are prepared, witnessing. witnessing. What does witnessing mean? You know, we have two ways of experiencing Laylatul Qadr. One is superficial. So, if you are alive, inshallah, in the months of Ramadan and you reach the nights of Qadr, then you have somehow witnessed Laylatul Qadr because either it was 19 or 21st or 23rd, if you have been, you know, alive and awake, so you have somehow witnessed Laylatul Qadr. But this is superficial. Not many people witness Laylatul Qadr. Many people go through Laylatul Qadr. Many people keep awake in Laylatul Qadr, but not many people witness Laylatul Qadr. Like, for example, imagine, uh, suppose Allah Taba Tabai Rizwanullah Ta'ala Alai is in the plane traveling. Many people, all the people in the airport, they would see him. All the passengers, they would see him. The crew will see him. But how many will do a drag of Allah? Even the one who is sitting next to him may not know who is Allah. Yeah, it remains unknown. Yes, they see him physically, they see his body, you know, his age, his shape. But who can do a drug of him? Must be someone either higher than him or equal to him or someone who has at least been a student of him, even his lawyer, but has learned something from him. So has some connection. 
without having something from his knowledge, his wisdom, his spirituality in your heart and mind, you cannot understand him. Okay? Now, Laylatul Qad is the same. Many people will go through Laylatul Qad, but how many people can actually benefit from Laylatul Qad, can witness Laylatul Qad? Therefore, one of the du'as that we should always make is to ask Allah to help us to witness Laylatul Qadr, to do idraq of Laylatul Qadr. Throughout the year, we should always remember this. Some people, we read or hear about them that they were working all the year, 365 days to be prepared for Laylatul Qadr. The late uh, Ayatollah Uzma Sheikh Muhammad Hussein Gharavi Isfahani, who was one of the teachers of Ayatollah Khui, Ayatollah Bahjad, etc. He used to recite every day 1,000 Suratul Qadr, 1,000 times, every day. He was very busy with his studies, teaching, etc., but he was very spiritual also. So, why every day he recites Surah Al Qadr? Because he knows what is Laylatul Qadr. To some extent, not completely. No one other than Allah knows completely. Because Allah even says to the Prophet, Wama adra kama Laylatul Qadr. Okay, so. I was thinking for many, many years, how can we have a glimpse of those who do idraq of Laylatul Qadr? Okay? And Alhamdulillah, this idea came to my mind. I think it was last year, if I'm not mistaken. I share with you and then you can tell me whether you think it's acceptable or not. In the past, I was thinking, okay, those who are very sincere, those who are very understanding, those who have ma'rifah, mahabba, sincerity, they will do a drag of Laylatul Qadr. That's correct, but that was not satisfactory. I wanted something more specific. So then I thought, okay, let us see what are the characteristics of Laylatul Qadr. And then see who would match Laylatul Qadr. Yeah? So if you are someone, for example, says, I am Ahlul Ilm. Okay, Ahlul Ilm means one of the people of knowledge. What does it mean? It means you are either a student or teacher or both. Yeah, you cannot say I am Ahlul Ilm <coughs> just because, for example, I enjoy seeing ulama. If you don't yourself learn and teach and write, you are not Ahlul Ilm. Or if I am Ahlul Ilm because I love books. Just loving books is not enough. Ahlul Ilm means you have to be engaged with Ilm. Okay, so who are Ahlul Laylat Al Qadr? Who are the people who can really witness Laylat Al Qadr? Who are in the same, you know, uh, fre frequency like Laylat Al Qadr? Okay, let us see what is Laylat Al Qadr. And, you know, Laylat Al Qadr is the peak of the month of Ramadan, and our aim should be to benefit from months of Ramadan so that we can do a drag of Laylatul Qadr. Number one, Laylatul Qadr is the night of measure. The night of planning. Okay? Quran has a discussion that everything that comes from Allah comes with a measure. 
the ayah says, "In min shay'in illa indana khaza'inuhu. There is nothing unless the treasures of that are with us. Anything good comes from treasures of Allah. If it is knowledge, if it is light, wisdom, love, reward, come from Allah. Okay? In min shay'in illa indana khaza'inuhu. Okay? Now, how much Allah will send down from his treasure? وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ مَعْلُومٍ But we don't send down except with a fixed measure. Over there, there is no limit. But what comes down to us has measure. Okay? Everything has a measure. Nothing happens from Allah's side without calculation. Everything is with calculation. There is, you know, it's not that they say, okay, send an unknown quantity. No. How much, for example, rain is going to come? Even drops are part of the decision of Allah. So how many drops should come? Okay. What... I am going to have tawfiq to do. Everything is measured based on my background, on what I have done, du'as of people for me, everything, you know, together determine the exact blessing that I am going to receive. So, Laylatul Qad is the night that everything for the next 12 months will be measured. Okay? So, there is an element of planning and measuring in Laylatul Qadr. Another quality of Laylatul Qadr is that it is very blessed. In Surah al dukhan Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin Mubaraka. We send down the Quran in a night which is Mubaraka. Very blessed night. The whole month of Ramadan is blessed. Yeah? Rasulullah, in his sermon in the month of Sha'ban, he said, Qad aqbala ilaykum shahrullah. The month of Allah has come to you with barakah and rahmah and maghfirah. It's the whole month of Ramadan. But the peak of this barakah is Laylatul Qad. What is barakah? Can you say? Blessing. Yeah, what does it mean, blessing? Because blessing can be used also for ni'mah. Favor is fadl. When you say something is blessed or mubarak, what does it mean? For example, Isa alayhi salam said, Ja'alani mubarakan aynama kunt. Allah has made me mubarak wherever I am. What does it mean? Means, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, means Allah made him nafa'an, very beneficial. When something is good and benefits others, this is mubarak. Okay? Or if I want to be more precise, when something has increasing or growing goodness, this is mubarak. Okay? In Baraka, there is always an element of increase. Sometimes someone has some money, but there is no Baraka in this money. Either remains the same or it's going to finish soon. 
Sometimes there is baraka. With this money you do lots of good things. Yeah? In the modern culture, they don't understand what is baraka. Yeah? They say it doesn't make difference. Whether you have earned this money from halal work or haram work, or I don't know, you had sincerity or not. This is the amount. 100 pounds is 100 pounds. But we say no. 100 pounds sometimes can be as blessed as 1 million pounds. And sometimes can be just even like one penny. Yeah? We see people with the same life, you know, uh, duration, with the same age, sometimes they do totally different things. Even uh, scholars, we see sometimes someone has studied 40 years, 50 years, very hard, but not that much impact. Someone like Allah Tabatabai Ayatollah Mutahari, you see that millions of people have benefited. There must be a reason here. It cannot be by chance. Yeah? So, baraka is an increasing goodness, is to benefit. Laylatul Qadr is a night which is mubaraka. Okay? So, how many qualities we mentioned so far? One. Yeah, what was number one? Measure and planning. Number two? Baraka. Number three? Salamun hiya hatta matla'il fajr. Is the night that up to fajr is peace. Yeah? Is not only no harm comes to you, but even more, you feel safe even with other things. You know, sometimes there are people that when you are with them, you are worried. Sometimes there are people that when you are with them, you are not worried, but you may be worried from someone else. But sometimes there are people that when you are worried, we are, you are with them, you are not worried even about bad people because they give you sukun, they give you peace. You know, with them, you are safe even from attacks of other people. Do you understand the difference? So Laylatul Qad is not just something that you feel safe about it. It's something that grants you peace, grants you safety. You are not worried about even other things. Okay? And it is better than 1,000 months. So it means that it's not ordinary. It's very special, very rare. Okay. Now, with these four qualities, you tell me who can be people who can hope to witness Laylatul Qadr. Who are the people that Laylatul Qadr belongs to them? It's their time. I made it very easy. Yes? <laughs> exactly. Yes, very good. So, if you are someone who is very measured in everything, how much they sleep, how much they eat, how much they talk, how much they spend, how much they study, how much they spend time with family, with community, everything, they have a plan, they have measure, then 
you can tick one box. Okay? And by the way, this means that you have wisdom. Because wisdom is to do things in the right time, right manner, using the right means. A person who is wise has measure for everything. Yeah? If you say the same thing everywhere, you are not wise. Yeah? A wise person knows what to say, where to say, how to say, how much to say. And sometimes maybe says, you know, I should keep silent. Number two, if you are a person that benefits others, you help people, you inspire people. It can be financial help, it can be moral help, a spiritual help, it can be social help, it can be through your <coughs> recommendations, it can be through your advice, it can be through your prayer. At least you can pray for people. If you cannot do anything, at least pray for them. Yeah, don't underestimate the power of prayer. So if you are a person that <laughs> you are beneficial, helpful, tick the second box, okay? Number three. If you are a person who has good akhlaq and people feel comfortable with you and also you give them a sense of safety and peace, you are like a you know, breeze of mercy wherever you are, then you have the third quality. And for sure, such people are not, you know, very many you know, available, are rare. But each of them is like Ummah. Allah says about Ibrahim, Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan. Ibrahim by himself was a nation. Yeah? How many people like this you can find? It's not many. But each of them values like thousands of people. So, if you have these qualities, then Laylatul Qadr is yours. And there is no way you miss Laylatul Qadr. Actually, you help people to witness Laylatul Qadr throughout the year. Okay? Do you agree with what I say? Or it, it makes sense? So, now we have a guideline. So, it's not just to say be sincere, you know, be patient. Yes, of course, you have to be sincere, patient, pious. But there are a few things that we have to practically work on. We should try to do things with measure. And this needs knowledge, this needs experience. Uh, I have uh, some series on Hikmah. Uh, the last series on Hikmah was uh, on practical wisdom. It was the last semester of Hosea of London. Uh, so if you are interested, please listen to that lecture series. Practical wisdom. What is practical wisdom? One of the tasks of the Prophet was to teach people the book and wisdom. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ We have to learn what is wisdom and become wise. Yeah? Knowledge is not enough. We desperately need wisdom. Okay? And I have explained uh, what is the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Just I'll give you an example. You go to an alim, very learned alim, and say, you know, I come from this city, from UK. I have this much money, 
and I want to make a center, a barga or you know, uh, or masjid. <coughs> Is there any reward for making a place that people pray and worship and do their you know uh, occasions? If that person is alim, he is aware of the hadith that we have about making masjid or, you know, make sadaqiyya, jariya, all these things, yeah? What would he tell you if he's alim? If he's alim, just alim, he would say, yes, of course. If you can manage to make a mosque, for example, till end of dunya, if this masjid is there, whoever prays there, you will benefit. Even if the masjid is destroyed, but because you had the niyyah, you made waqf, etc., you are going to benefit. And he can quote for you many hadiths. But if he is alim and wise, he would not give you advice right away. He says, tell me more about your city. How many families are there? Do you have already a center or not? If you say, you know, we are a small community and a small city and we have already a center, then he would say, it's haram to make another masjid. <laughs> not only it's not good, it's haram because you are dividing. Or there is another thing which is priority. Maybe now you have to make a school. It's more important than having a second, you know, master. Even if you need a larger place, maybe now the priority is to have a school. Then after a school, you can make a big mosque. If he's Hakim, they would say now education of our children is very important. We can, you know, meet in the school. Yeah, but we cannot run a school in the masjid if we don't have the facilities. Or he may say, we need something else. You know, there was a great marja in Mashhad, uh, Ayatollah al-Uzma Sayyid Hadi Milani. Uh, he was uh, at the same generation of Ayatollah Khui, Ayatollah Allama Tabatabai. He was a student of Ayatollah Qazi Tabatabai. So one person told him, I have money of my own. Please advise me how to spend it. And he said, I can give you an advice, but you know, people are going to blame you. He said, no problem. So at that time, shrine of Imam Raza was small and there were not enough facilities for people as you know, washrooms. So Agha said, make, purchase a land near Haram, make, you know, like multi-floor washroom for people. And he made this. And then many people started saying, not all people, but that this money was not a good money. So now it's spent for toilet. <laughs> <laughs> if it was a good money, it should have been used for making masjid, for example, or a school. Must be something wrong. Because they don't have wisdom, but Allah has wisdom. He knows that what we need now is something which is missing and people need. And maybe making this you know, public toilet for Zawar is more rewarded than you know, making another masjid next to the shrine. You know, why you need masjid next to the shrine, for example? Uh, unless there's a community that need. So, Wisdom is different from knowledge. And wisdom is a matter of measure. So those who are wise, they can witness Laylatul Qadr. Those who are beneficial, those who are offering peace and tranquility to people. There are people that when they talk, they cause tension, they cause confrontation. When they visit a community and leave communities, you know, divided, confused. This is not good. So, if inshallah you want to prepare for the months of Ramadan and for Laylatul Qadr, try to develop these qualities in yourself. 
try to be a person that works for unity, a person that does everything with measure, a person that is beneficial for others. It's very important. The dearest people, the most lovable people to Allah are the people who are more beneficial. You know the Hadith of Qudsi, Al Khalqo Ayali. Allah says, People are like my family. Those who benefit my family the most are dearer to me. And offer peace to people. I want to also talk a little bit about charity, but I think if there is, I pause, if there is any question, first, you know, we can deal with questions. If there is no question, I talk a little bit about charity, but uh, we have to finish before 11, yes? Yeah, if there are any questions, any comments,